booktube it's Andrea and I'm here today to do my May book haul. I didn't buy many books this month I think it's like, like eight or nine and some of those were given to me anyway um so I'm trying to read more than I obtain or purchase it's not working purchasing has uh, slowed down but unfortunately so is the reading it always does in the summer but more of that in my wrap-up so uh, the first book I got this month was given to me by a friend and it's called Private by James Patterson, the world's most exclusive detective agency and that's been written with Maxine Pietro. And this is a series actually I believe, this is book one in a series. Former US Marine Jack Morgan runs Private, a renowned investigation company with branches around the globe. It's where you go when you need maximum force and maximum discretion. The secrets of the most influential men and women on the planet come to Jack Daly and his staff of investigators use the world's most advanced forensic tools to make and break their cases. In LA, Jack is already deep into the investigation of a multi-million dollar gambling scandal and the unsolved slayings of 18 schoolgirls when he learns of a horrific murder close to home. His best friend's wife, Jack's former lover, has been killed. It nearly pushes him over the edge. Instead, Jack pushes back and devotes all of Private's resources to tracking down her killer. And Jack doesn't have to play by the rules. Um, I think I've read one of these um, and I enjoyed it, but I haven't read this first one. So. Uh, the second one I got was Eleanor Moran, or Moran if you're from Ireland, A Daughter's Secret. And this one says, Mia is a high-flying child psychotherapist, hoping to be made partner in the thriving practice where she works. But then she takes on a case that will change her life forever and bring back the past she has done her best to bury. 13-year-old Gemma was the last person to see her father before he went on the run, fleeing from a major criminal trial. The police are desperate to track him down, pressuring Mia to tease the information out of his angry and reluctant daughter. But what does Gemma really know? And how hard can Mia push her without betraying her? Both are hiding devastating secrets. Both need the other to survive. Will they learn to trust each other before it's too late? So again, this is my sort of book. I love these sorts of things. And another one I got, either given or picked up really cheaply somewhere, is Martina Cole's The Faithless. Actually, I think this one was given to me by my friend at work. Love Martina Cole. Thou shalt not kill. Gabby looked at the woman she had hated nearly all her life. Then she sat down on the ladder back chair, put her face into her bloodied hands and cried. To the outside world, Cynthia Taylor is a woman to envy, but Cynthia is deeply unhappy with her lot. She has also craved, always craved the best things in life and she's determined to get them, even if it means devastation and tragedy for those nearest to her. Amongst the many casualties are her husband, Jimmy, unable to fight the wife he can never please, her sister, Celeste, from whom Cynthia steals her most precious possession, and her parents, Mary and Jack, who pick up the pieces. But the victims who suffer the most, most are Cynthia's children. For James Jr. and Gabby, the pain she causes will stay with them forever. So again, another good book there that I like the sound of. I also picked up, um, or ordered, a copy of a book called The Asylum by John Harwood. I saw this on Missy, Binge Reader's channel. She picked it up and I thought it just sounded amazing. I had to get it. Unfortunately, it came with a little sticker on it and now the sticker's torn the spine. So I'll have to go over that with some pencil or something to, just to cover it up. Very haunting photograph on the top, on the, on the cover. Actually looks like my niece, but there you go. So the asylum says, there was no clock within my hearing, nothing to mark the passing of the hours except for the slow fading of the light and the occasional spatter of rain against the glass. Nothing to do but struggle in vain to comprehend what had befallen me until I fell at last into a doze and woke in the lamplight to find Bella arranging my supper tray. She had bought me another draught of chloral, which I swallowed reluctantly for the oblivion it promised. But instead of sleeping through the night, I woke in a kind of delirium in which I was aware of myself lying in bed unable to move, spinning through fearful dreams until daylight, and the horror of coming fully awake and finding myself still at Tregannan Asylum. It's freaky. Now, when I saw the name Tregannan, I thought it's either going to be Wales, it's not, it's somewhere in England, or it's going to be Cornwall, because it's that sort of Celtic um, name. But, I don't know, it just says a remote corner of England, but it sounds absolutely fascinating and quite creepy, and we like creepy. 
Uh, then there's the book I got in my uh, May's Book and a Brew, which was Woman of the Dead by Bernhard Eichner. I've already read this out on my Book and a Brew unboxing, which if I remember, I will link down below. So if you want to go and see what this book's about, go and go and do that. It, it, uh, watch that. It sounds absolutely brilliant. My favourite series. Uh, one of my favourite series is a new, had a new release recently and that's The Chronicles of St Mary by Jodie Taylor. They have changed the design of the book so they're no longer the gorgeous sort of terracotta brown ones with the clock on it. Um, they're now these sort of retro bright colours which is a shame because now they're not going to match on the shelf although they are the same height. I thought they were actually, it, this was smaller because it's so much thicker but it's just a thicker book, they are the same height. And this is a signed copy which I pre-ordered from Jodie Taylor's website. And I was quite interested when I picked it up to find that it had actually been posted from Octavo's bookshops in bookshop in Cardiff Bay, where it is just not far away. I've been in there myself because Octavo's Octavo's is owned by Accent Press, who publish the Chronicles of St Mary's and Jodie Taylor's other works. So this one um, basically says. Because, my dear Max, you dance on the very edge of darkness, and I don't think it would take very much for you to dance my way. When an old enemy appears out of nowhere with an astonishing proposition for Max, a proposition that could change anything, Max is tempted, very tempted. With an end to an old conflict finally in sight, it looks as if St Mary's problems are over with. Can they finally all live happily ever after? As everything hangs in the balance, Max and St Mary's find themselves engulfed in tragedies worse than they could ever imagine. Is this the end? Ooh. I love these books, they're very very funny. Um, there is another book coming out I think this month. It is um, a collection of the short stories that she has written. So there's some Christmas stories and so on and focusing on some of the other characters so I'll be picking that up soon. Hopefully that will be at the end of June in my June haul. Uh, the next one I have is a play that I originally saw on Jen Campbell's channel and that's Peter and Alice by John Logan and this is the story of when Alice Little Hargreaves met Peter Llewellyn Davis at the opening of a Lewis Carroll, Carroll, Carroll exhibition in 1932. The original Alice in Wonderland came face to face with the original Peter Pan. So I think that sounds absolutely fascinating and just looking at the ca characters you've got Peter and Alice, Lewis Carroll, James Barry, then there's Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland and various other characters as well so I'm going to look forward to reading that. I do like to read the odd play. It is hard to read plays because they don't, it's difficult to read a play and get all the nuances, it's much easier to see it but I wanted to add this to my play collection. I will be reading that soon, it won't take me very long. And the last book I got is one that I think, uh, yeah, it was definitely given to me by my friend Sue, and that's Harlan Coburn's Missing You. Love Harlan Coburn. Got quite a few of his novels now. And <clears throat> this one says, it's a profile, like all the others on the online dating site. But as NYPD detective Kat Donovan focuses on the com company and picture, she feels her whole world exposed as emotions she's ignored for decades come crashing down on her. Staring back at her is her ex fiance Jeff, the man who shattered her heart and whom she hasn't seen in 18 years. Kat feels a spark, wondering if this might be the moment when past tragedies receive, proceed and a new world opens up to her. But when she reaches out to the men in the pro man in the profile, her reawakened hope quickly darkens with suspicion and then terror <clears throat> as an unspeakable conspiracy comes to light in which monsters prey upon the most vulnerable. As the body count mounts and Kat's hope for a second chance with Jeff grows more and more elusive, she is consumed by an investigation that challenges her feelings about everyone she's ever loved. Her former fiancé, her mother and even her father, whose cruel murder so long ago has never been fully explained. With the lives on the line, including her own, Kat must venture deeper into the darkness than she has ever has before and discover if she has the strength to, to survive what she finds there. And this one's quite a big one. But I love Harlan Coburn, and so those, oh, I can pick them up and they're not all the same way around, are all the books I got in May. So not very many, I will admit I am being very good with the purchasing at the moment. That's likely to change. My birthday's in June, so I'm hoping for books and colouring books for my birthday. Also, I have a voucher coming from work. It's not a, not a huge voucher, it's only like 20 quid. And uh, it's a love to shop, so I will be spending now in my favourite bookshop, which is Waterstones. 
so I can get a book in there. So June's book haul could be a little bit on the larger side. I don't know. I really, really don't know. But it might be. But there we go. So that is all the books that I bought in May. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to comment, like, share. And of course, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. And I will be back very soon with another book video, colouring video, hobby video, nonsense video. But I'll be back soon anyway. So I'll see you soon. Bye!